This is a Course in Miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Chapter 12, The Holy Spirit's Curriculum, Section 8, The Attraction of Love for Love, Paragraph 1. Do you really believe that you can kill the Son of God? The Father has hidden His Son safely within Himself and kept Him far away from your destructive thoughts. But you know neither the Father nor the Son because of them. You attack the real world every day and every hour and every minute, and yet you are surprised that you cannot see it. If you seek love in order to attack it, you will never find it. For if love is sharing, how can you find it except through itself? Offer it, and it will come to you, because it is drawn to itself. But offer attack, and love will remain hidden, for it can live only in peace. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, just that it starts off that it, it's telling me that my destructive thoughts make it so that I want to kill the Son of God, <laughs> you know, and that anything that's an attack thought uh, keeps my awareness away from my a true identity. So long as I have loving thoughts, loving thoughts will be returned to me because they share and they can, you can... They only are, what's it say here? If For if love is sharing, how can you find it except through your, through itself? On number five there, on sentence on yeah. five. Offer it and it will come to you because it is drawn to itself. You know, it's just um, a perfect reminder that if I want to experience love, I need to offer it, I need to extend it. If the, pro- I, the problem with these, always the thing, and, uh-huh. and you know, I'm, all, I'm the the proverbial broken record, is that I, I hear the words. Uh-huh. I, I think I understand what they say. Mm-hmm. It, it says here, there's a an illustration in this quickly. I find it quite amazing. You attack the real world every day, every hour, every minute. Right. It didn't bother to say every second. Uh, but that's true. So, so my existence here is attack. I know it says that in other places in the course. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to attack and love simultaneously. So there's something about the way I live. There's something about the quality that we consider normal. Uh, what do you call it? The the attitude du jour. You know, it's like what we're doing. It's what's on the menu. Right. There's something about it that is violent, attacking. It makes love run away. It, it hides it. What is that thing? Well... I would just say that um, we choose to believe and um, we believe in the reality in which we occupy. So, I do remember that when I met and talked to a guy, uh, it was the, the secretary to the Dalai Lama's secretary. Mm-hmm. And so it was the secretary of the secretary. He came to Boulder. He needed help. And I sort of was there and he knew me from when we were in India in 1990. And... He said, Mr. Philip, you know, I, I could use some help in this, why, whatever. Well, first of all, I was in no position to help him. I had the distinct feeling, just even speaking to him, that it was violent. Mm. I felt like my speech was violent, that he was so softened in his psychology of living in Makliod Ganj under the umbrella of the Dalai Lama, that um, his quietness, I, I felt so boring. Boorish. And I have felt that way around Canadians as well. 
uh-huh. you know, Canadians were really receding. So anyway, go, as, a, as a way to, for me to orient myself towards what it is accusing me of. Right. Well, the only thing I can, I can say, I can only say from my perspective, is that um, I do believe in the world in which I occupy. I, I believe it's real. I, I, have, I believe, you know, I have a body. I believe that I go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning, and the sun comes up and the sun goes down. And, you know, so where's the attack? People come and people go. Well, the thing of it is, is that as soon as I relate all of my awareness through my sensory being, then I am going to automatically categorize. I'm going to put things up. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to put them in categories, and so I'm going to judge uh, because I experience my world through sensations. When something is coming at me verbally that seems like an attack, I'm going to pull back. Right, right. I, it, it's going to be an automatic thing. Why? Because I'm, I experience myself as a body. If somebody really hits me, I'm not going to just, just stand there. I'm going to say, why the heck did you hit me? You know, because my, in other words, where Jesus says, turn the other cheek, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That person just out of nowhere just wanted to smack me, you know? So I identify with that. With defense. With that self that needs to defend itself in order to protect itself. And um, I, I misinterpret my good deeds as way of getting strokes sometimes, not just doing them out of uh, just because, without any attachment to it. So from a human perspective, I'm, I'm all tied up in the ways of the world. I have to, only through doing these practices, do I have those moments where it's all suspended. Those moments of, of insight, of softening, of... Of, of of the grace of God, the mm-hmm. grace of the Guru, but the thing is, there's a place, and you know, Krishnamurti has this thing that I always enjoyed, where he says, they were talking about love, and the and the students in the room are saying, well, you know, love, we develop, we get to this point. He says, sir, we don't have time for that. You must love now. You must love now, sir. It's very important. Mm-hmm. Stop. Stop this process of working to love. Do it now, right now. I'm thinking that there's a, you know, it was a beautiful moment because who thinks that way Mm -hmm. other than Krishnamurti and the Mm -hmm. Course of Miracles? Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess, have you ever been, and I I have, uh, where somebody said, um, you know that thing you've been doing or that thing you are, that thing you said, Mm -hmm. um, that was really, really painful to me. Or have you had that to deliver somebody? I know you did with your parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you told them stuff from your childhood uh-huh, that right. they thought was good fun. Right. They thought was good fun. Mm-hmm. And you said, this stilted me. This this crushed me. This uh, sort of uh, mashed my ability. Well, it set up my modus operandi of how I it's, operate right, in the world. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But they were sort of in the moment anyway devastated mm-hmm. to think that they had what they thought was just good fun or just mm-hmm. parenting or whatever mm-hmm. they find out bad idea yeah mm-hmm. you know that wasn't good that wasn't good parenting and i've been carrying that delusion for so long and it was in a min- it was in a it was an instant that they realized that they had been that way with you mm-hmm. and what i'm saying here is that in this Every minute, every second, I'm in this attack mode. I have to wake up to what that is that I'm doing. The Course is telling me I'm attacking love. What is that thing? Some way of looking at the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and like along with Krishnamurti, I don't really have time to just you know work my way out of it slowly, slowly. If, if I could hear it now, if I could hear the Course saying love beckons to itself love attracts to itself it seeks itself out yes and then and to find everybody out, wants right love. And, right and to find out in myself where that essential confusion is 
using your parents as an example in that, or I could use any parents. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen this so many times, mm-hmm. a woman that says, well, you know, I, I didn't nurse my child because of, you know, I had this or that situation. And when they find out what they did by not nursing or by listening to, you know, medical advice or the mistimed advice of a friend, um, they realize that they permanently wounded a relationship with their child who's maybe an adult at this point. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it, it creates repentance, you know, a repentant attitude. And that's what I'm saying is I'm thinking that if, if I could see what I'm doing, I think I might have a really a kind of a, I would say humbling, but it may be crushing is more accurate, repentance for my way of being yeah, in the I, world. I think, I think that um, if we could really see it, we'd break down and cry, to tell you the truth. Because um, you'd realize how, how many times you brushed away love. And everyone wants to be loved. You seek love in order to attack it. Nobody, nobody's nobody's going to resonate. Well, let me see. Nobody's going to resonate this. Let me put it this way. I don't really resonate with that. Mm-hmm. Anytime I sought love... I never thought of myself as wanting to attack it, mm-hmm. but the scientific viewpoint. Let's let's be, you know, I've used this guy before. Let's say Audubon, mm-hmm. and he's he's looking for wildlife. He's looking for birds. What's he gonna do? He's gonna he's gonna catch them. He's gonna tag them, and he's gonna take their blood, and he's gonna do all kinds of terrible well, things. And <laughs> often often he's gonna kill them. And yeah, he's gonna kill and them. And then he's gonna stuff them uh-huh. and draw them. Yes. And he's gonna be lauded. As a naturalist, par excellence, right. societies grow up in his name. This is how we love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this is how we love. Yes. Paragraph two. <laughs> God's son is as safe as his father, for the son knows his father's protection and cannot fear. His father's love holds him in perfect peace, and needing nothing, he asks for nothing. Yet he is far from you, whose self he is, for you chose to attack him, and he disappeared from your sight into his father. He did not change, but you did, for a split mind and all its works were not created by the father and could not live in the knowledge of him. See, there's that split mind, you know, that's that's the... the the crux of the matter is that um, I experience those moments of truth, the moments of, you know, those blissful moments of little joy and, and peace and love. And then I go back to, oh, I need to take care of this and I need to tell so-and-so that. And, I, you know, I go about my day and I'm immediately on a different kind of mindscape. I'm on a, I'm on a past, present I mean, past, future, not past, present, past, future reference point on a horizontal plane of time running by and me running in that time space. Whereas when I'm going to experience the love that the Course is talking about that is totally protected by the Father, my, my true self, God's Son, is safe in His Father. Thank God. You know, that my other ideas cannot touch and and interfere with God's world. So on the split mind is that uh, my my ego takes over. I allow it takes over my daily affairs, and I think that my God time is special time. You know, it's where I can sit down and you know not be interrupted by the world and everything else. The course is telling me to walk it in the world. But right now, I'm split. So I have my time with God. And there are those times that I can totally experience with others and everything else because I can feel it more frequently now that I'm practicing it again. But otherwise, I recognize I work on a, on a horizontal plane in the time, uh, time-space um, continuum. And then... When I do with my God time, I'm on a vertical plane because if I quiet myself, I can actually feel a sense of nowness, which is the only time you can feel the presence anyway, at least for me. The only time I can feel the presence with me, which is always a place of love and peace, is 
when I'm not thinking about anything in time and space. Well, the difficulty, I, I would say, just in response to that, I mean, what comes to mind, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm not your spiritual advisor, but I would say that there's a possibility that you reverse the relationship of God time with horizontal time. In other words, God time is when you're in the world. That's your God time because you're, you're confronted with the face of Christ. What, well, better, it, it what is, better God time is there? And then you take that mm -hmm. back to your holy lair mm -hmm. and meditate. Well, that would be that would be the right way to do it. I'm just saying that. Well, I'd never I, really thought about it. It's not like I sit around and and and, and cherish and sit on these nuggets of wisdom. <laughs> it's just it, it it occurred to me. Well, no, that would that's that's right. And if I walk out of the house. And I and you know part of my lesson is to recognize in my brother that what I give is what I will receive. Um, I, I'm conscious of it, but it, if I must pay attention to how lax I am about every moment, because you know moments come and moments go, and I waste. In the course, they call it wasting time. Because all time is there for the extension of love. That's all it's there for. It's so that we can awaken to the truth of who well, we let are. Well, let me throw a bit in there that I heard in this. Okay. And it is that, uh, you know, in The Matrix, in the movie, mm -hmm. um, you know how that uh, Morpheus explains to Neo and company how um, uh, the system, the machine planet, or, or Agent Smith as a kind of a, a, you know, a kind of, I don't know what you'd call him in the Matrix, some sort of police force that's in the Matrix, that they can manifest in any one of the NPCs, non-participating, uh, whatever they are, the, the, any people anywhere. You know, right. a guy selling apples, mm -hmm. and Agent Smith can appear inside the guy that's yes. selling apples. You know, mm -hmm. they do that little wiggle, and yeah. suddenly Agent Smith is there, and yes, he's, you yes. know, Neo's in a fight with an apple vendor. Yes, exactly. You know, um, the Course is saying that right here. It's saying it. That when you come at the world without love, um, the face of Christ retreats back to the Father, and you're st you're stuck right. with a with world your without. Nightmare. You're stuck with a world without love. That's right. You're stuck with a world without the face of Christ. I know. So it's no wonder you have to go back home and meditate and quiet, because if you think that somehow the face of Christ is going to emerge to meet someone who isn't in a, like a moving meditation. Mm -hmm. My brother, there you are, there you are. You know what? It's painful. I'm speaking from personal experience. It's painful to see the, the face of Christ everywhere. Not, okay, let's get... Yeah, let's past, get real <laughs> or get, get more accurate. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, pr I'm pretty accurate, okay. but it's like I, I, I've had enough of the experience to know it's disruptive and and it's and it's pleasant and painful, but you you know at least at this point in my life you walk around crying. Oh right. You just walk around crying because there's some guy stocking shelves at the grocery store, and you're overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the beauty of this person, realizing that there's the 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 the, the visage of God is there, you know, stacking tuna fish cans. Right. And 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 then when somebody smiles and looks at you. You melt, and you go, what, what did I do to deserve this? You know, why did they say hi to me? And, and, and you say, well, you're really taking it too far. I'm saying if you follow the logic here and you allow God's face to look at us through the world and out of the world, mm -hmm. now I can see why when I go out and I've got that chip on my shoulder about the world, um, that's why people seem so dead, isn't it? You know why? Because yeah. they are. Because Christ retreated to the safety of the Father. Well, that's true. Because I'm a dangerous yeah. thing yeah. running around. Yeah. yeah. Does that I, make sense? I, yeah, absolutely. And I, I know that if I'm more in, engaging in, in, a, in a light space just because of, well, whatever it might be, you know, and most of the time lately it's because we have been doing the course and I'm actually can get kind of high off of it, to tell you the truth. And, um, and in those instances, when I do go out of the house in those states of mind and everything else, the, the face of Christ does come back. The joy comes back in the little places and everything else. It, it, 
It really does, if I'm really honest. I'm and not. It, I'm, and, and, but you know what? I'm not. I'm not like, know, picking on you. No, I know that, but I know you're not picking on me. I'm just giving it. I. I'm just saying that I do experience that as well as my as my days where I'm just sleepwalking. Well, and, and it's okay. This is the deal, though. This is the deal. And the people that have asked Sai Baba and Darshan or whatever, mm-hmm. and they'll say, Swami, give me enlightenment. Or like, you know, and he just puts them down immediately and says, you couldn't handle it. Right. You could not handle it. We, we assume that we can handle the face of Christ. It's, as that experience that I told you about in the church, yes. from me, now, I, you know, I feel like I'm in a 12-step meeting right now, mm-hmm. you know, t- 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 <laughs> revealing. T- and you're supposed to say, Phil, I love and support you for all of your problems. <laughs> but uh, it's difficult. Um, it, om- it hurts. It, it's for me to see love in the world and to know it's there and to know that I'm the problem. Right. I'm the one that's not bringing it forward because of whatever it is I've got mm-hmm. going, um, it's, it leads to a, a painful state. I, know, I agree. It leads to yeah. pain. You know, mm-hmm. uh, now, and, and I've had to, especially since we've been doing it now, I have to deal with it in terms of let it hurt, mm-hmm. let it hurt. I mean, this is like uh, what when I used to ice skate in Belleville, you know, and, and my feet would be frozen absolutely solid. And, um, and then I'd stick them under cold water, and the pain was excruciating. The pain of thawing out mm-hmm. from a kind of near frostbite or frostbite. And that's what this is. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm walking around, in a sense, frostbit. Mm-hmm. And to see the face of Christ is the big thaw. Oh, I see, yeah. The big thaw. Because mm-hmm. if I see that, the glow, the warmth, the love that comes off of the world around it brings me. circulation back in makes right. your heart beat better <laughs> right and, and also you got to deal you know then i have to deal with the thing of like well you know i mean always dry, <laughs> let's drag in hiroshima and nagasaki to keep us grounded but um anyway okay well let's see what else it has to say <laughs> paragraph three when you made visible what is not true what is true became invisible to you Yet it cannot be invisible in itself, for the Holy Spirit sees it with perfect clarity. It is invisible to you because you are looking at something else. Yet it is no more up to you to decide what is visible and what is invisible than it is up to you to decide what reality is. What can be seen is what the Holy Spirit sees. The definition of reality is God's, not yours. He created it. And he knows what it is. You who knew have forgotten. And unless he had given you a way to remember, you would have condemned yourself to oblivion. And uh, along the lines of the uh, the matrix kind of thing I was saying, it says here, for me to see the face of Christ, these eyes Mm -hmm. won't work. Right. The Holy Spirit has to see through these eyes. Yes, it's a it's a vision. A vision is not the same as what you see through your so eyes. So, in other words, uh, Christ recedes from me as well. If I'm looking with hard eyes mm-hmm. at a hard world, th- that's what I'm going to see. Mm-hmm. The, the hard eyes are going to create the hard world, and vice versa. But uh, there has to be this invitation to be seen through. Yeah. And so that, like, if I and that's this is the part of my pain. This is the I would say the pain that I experienced. That I was talking about about the big thaw is that what's happening there is I'm still owning that vision. It's not mine. Mm-hmm. You know, if I see beauty, let's say, let's say I'm at a grocery store mm-hmm. and I'm doing the course and for some reason I have whatever, warming of the heart, warming of my perceptions, have a glimpse of the happy dream, whatever happens in the good way. And I look at it and um, I'm overwhelmed with a sense of this love or beauty. Phil Hamilton isn't doing that. That's right. And he better realize that or he will experience the split mind. Yes, the split mind. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Um, I I just, the last sentence on this, you who knew have forgotten and unless he had given you a way to remember, you would have condemned yourself to oblivion. So, I mean, um, thank God we aren't able to do that, to separate out completely from God 
you know, uh, because I would have, that's, that's how I would have created my own, I mean, perpetual prison where I never, ever experience love, not in a true sense. It will always be love that's based on conditions and needs and wants and fulfilling needs and wants and things like that, but it will not be that love that is totally unconditional and loves without, without end. So, I mean, all I, I'm, I mean, I'm really enjoying what this, this section says. There's not a lot I can say to it except that, um, you know, this first line here also, when you made, when you made visible what is not true, what is true became invisible to you. Wow. To think that I've been responsible for making visible what is not true. Not just me, myself, but, you know, the egoic mind that is everywhere. Made visible what is not true. And because of it, I can't see correctly. I, my perceptions are all off. And yet it's held inviolable. Is that the right word? In, inviolable? Yeah. Um, through the Holy Spirit who will always see it in perfect clarity and, and, and waits for that invitation, waits for me to, as you said, invite it in so that I can experience the love of another and the love of myself. And so it becomes, again, that circuit that I like to reference, like a circuit that just goes back and forth because it, it finds itself anyway. Yeah, well, okay, uh, paragraph four, because I there are some things in there that probably it's not a good idea to try to second-guess the Holy Spirit, so I'm going to read paragraph four. Because of your Father's love, you can never forget him, for no one can forget what God himself placed in his memory. You can deny it, but you cannot lose it. A voice will answer every question you ask and a vision will correct the perception of everything you see. For what you have made invisible is the only truth, and what you have not heard is the only answer. God would reunite you with yourself and did not abandon you in your distress. You are waiting only for him and do not know it. Yet his memory shines in your mind and cannot be obliterated. It is no more past than future, being forever, always. So we're in a situation, as I said in the first part, and it seems to be a theme here. It's, a, it's difficult to touch. But it seems like a theme of uh, there's, a, there's a pervasive mood, a pervasive attitude, a pervasive posture that I adopt, considering I'm a physical creature, um, that is inimical or against, that, 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 that uh, hides away what would be God's visions, what would, the, the, the words are, are inaudible. The word of God is inaudible. The, the vision of Christ is invisible. Because of some habitual posture I have that the Course is trying to wake me up to this habitual posture, I, I consider it as normal is waking up in the morning and going to bed at night and it's trying to wake me up out of that sleepy trance it's a dead man's walk dead man walking right mm -hmm. there's there's a lack of understanding what's moving this what's mm -hmm. what's driving this and and even my tendency to try to pick it up grasp it with my own hand is it's the same stuff it's the aggressive act it's it's that's what it's trying to get me to quit doing. There's another kind of holding, another kind of grasping, another kind of reaching, another kind. and it's and it's the the inverse or the reverse. It's like finding like let's say I have two hands and these two hands do whatever they do, you know, whether it's, you know, heavy duty work or light work or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's where I am and that's what I do in this. Do I have the does the Holy Spirit have the equivalency of these hands in this body that I can relate to? these hands, these eyes. I know that this 
can be, you know, woo woo. But yeah. but I'm saying mm -hmm. that if I reach out with my physical hands, if I reach out with my physical eyes, my physical ears, and I'm blind, deaf, and dumb, and I can't see the vision of Christ, this is asking me to contact that other form, that other body. What do you think? Well, um, I uh, as far as the Holy Spirit having eyes and ears and things like that, obviously they're not of a physical form, but certainly it extends to us when we invite it in. It, um, it gives us, um, I, I could call it intuition. It's not always in words, but in, there's this, this sense of what I need to be up to if I'm really paying attention. There's a sense that I need to be doing some things. Sometimes it does come as sort of an inward and inner voice that lets me know that. And, um, and definitely the vision of others in the world, as you said, becomes softened. There's not a, this, not this harsh um, thing, everything coming at me, like, you know, interrupting my way that I wanted to get something done or how, however it is, like it's coming at me. It doesn't feel like an affront. It feels either laughable. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I see some comedy when I feel the Holy Spirit working through um, whatever I'm working through. Or uh, so, it, I mean, I don't know if that answers it or well, not. Well, let's say, let's, say let's say I'm down at the grocery store uh -huh. and the guy's packing, you know, stacking tuna fish cans. Uh -huh. Normally I see, you know, you know, a dumpy guy with a box and I don't think much of him. And, mm -hmm. it's, and, and in, back in the back of my mind, I have a kind of sense of there, but for the grace of God, go I. You know, thank mm -hmm. God I'm a professional or whatever, yeah. that I had this other life. And, oh, it's great for him, but, you know, <laughs> not me. <laughs> you know, this, so there's a really a kind of a, but it's a, it's a thing in the back of my mind. I don't mean to sound like a snot. You know, I'm not a no, snot. No, I know. It's not, it's not even audible. I, I understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. a, it's mm -hmm. a general feeling, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the small town, small population. Mm -hmm. Um, but is it possible that in the same way that I look at the guy stacking those tuna fish cans and I see it with this, you know, you know, heaven is the decision I must make. Yeah. You know, I, I accept the atonement for myself in terms of these mantras that have you with the upward gaze, the upward look, you know, that if, that in the same way that he's transformed oddly, as I said about that church in Florida, that he's transformed into really a, a strange masquerade over the, the the absolute holy face of Christ, and 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 it's this strange disjoint disconnection where there's this Christ that's equal, and that everyone then takes on this equality of call it holiness. Yes. Is it possible that because that does happen? Mm -hmm. It does happen. Yes. Um, I I don't think I'm speaking out of turn saying that. I mean, it, I think it's wrong to kind of pretend that it doesn't go there if you follow the course, right? And whether you want it or not. Now, so I look at my hands, and they do hard work or soft work. Is it possible that the same softness of gaze, in the same way that the guy stacking tuna fish mm -hmm. cans looks transformed, that these hands? have that same transformation. Uh, yes. If I, I would, soften I would towards say, my work, yes. towards my place in the world. As I would say that if you've seen it there, that you would say that that exact same thing would be what you would experience about yourself. Because it's all inclusive. Once, once you start to see that um, through the vision of the Holy Spirit, it cannot not reach you. Because it's all inclusive. Well, it's the invitation. It right? is the invitation. And the Absolutely. invitation, it's not like uh, the Holy Spirit is kind of fishing through the invitations and deciding which ones to take. <laughs> That's right. So he says, oh, invited. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's go. I'll take it. Yeah, we need <laughs> yeah. to. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Paragraph five. You have but to ask for this memory, and you will remember. Yet the memory of God cannot shine in a mind that has obliterated it and wanted and wants to keep it so for the memory of god can dawn only in a mind that chooses to remember and that has relinquished the insane desire to control reality you who cannot even control yourself should hardly aspire to control the universe 
but look upon what you have made of it and rejoice that it is not so. There you go. <laughs> you know, the, the, there's the story of the boy who stuck his finger in the dike. Yeah. And so think about the dike, the Zyder Z or whatever, the, the ocean that's on the other side of that dike mm-hmm. is um, uh, God. <laughs> and uh, the little boy is us. And we spend all of our time, you know, sticking our finger in that hole. Uh-huh. So that this thing will stay put and yeah, not right. flood our existence, not flood our world. Is that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I Th- do. In other words, we spend a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. Well, it took a lot of effort to pump God out of our lives, and we want to keep it that way. It's nice and dry and toasty, and we can create our little, <laughs> you know, Amsterdam world here. <laughs> Amsterdam. Amsterdam nation. <laughs> That's right. It would be Amsterdam nation. <laughs> Amsterdam nation. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> good name for a website. Yeah, Am- yeah. Amsterdam nation. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, that's what it means. No, but that's but it, 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 it's total constant maintenance. It is, and they talk about that. That if you if that if we understood how much energy and effort we spend keeping God at bay, keeping the light and the love out out there, so that I can have my own little interpretive world. If we knew how much effort that took. We would stop it, but we don't. It's just we're fascinated with what we're up to, you know? Sometimes good, sometimes not. Sometimes up, sometimes down. You know, I, so. Like those poor Amsterdam people who spend all their time <laughs> trying to keep their land dry from the Zyder Z. Is that what you mean? It, what's a Zyder Z? I know, it's a great name. It's, I think the, the, it was the name of a band that used to play in Memphis, Zyder Z. I thought it was a great name. But, um, it's a it's a name for like it's a it's a Dutch kind of a word. Z is ocean or C Z Z E E. Oh. And Zyder is like, hell, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm a fan. You know, what's Led Zeppelin? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Paragraph six. Yes. Son of God, be not content with nothing. What is not real cannot be seen and has no value. God could not offer his son what has no value, nor could his son receive it. You were redeemed the instant you thought you had deserted him. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Everything you made has never been and is invisible because the Holy Spirit does not see it. Yet what he does not see is yours to behold, and through his vision your perception is healed. I'm going to read it again. Yet what he does see, I think I said does not. Yeah. uh Yet what he does see is yours to behold. And through his vision, your perception is healed. You have made invisible the only truth that this world holds. Valuing nothing, you have sought nothing. By making nothing real to you, you have seen it. But it is not there. And Christ is invisible to you because of what you have made visible to yourself. Well, follow that chain of concepts. Well, the I think the hardest part, you know, and it's italicized, is like by making nothing real to you, you have not seen it. You have oh, the scene. I did the same thing. I put the knot in there. Yeah, by making nothing real to you, you have seen it. Yeah, but it is not there. You know, it's like. Then you try to um, look out in my world, and I say it's not there. Okay, what I'm, I'm going to go back. To... What I'm perceiving is not there. Well, to try to anchor this in the tuna fish can guy, that okay. I had, because <laughs> I was right. I was at the grocery store, and okay. the guy was stacking cans, and okay. I thought tuna was an interesting you know product to <laughs> okay. use for this example. All right. Um, I'm looking at this person. Uh huh. Typically, typically he's just a little slug of a guy. Uh huh. You know, gra- okay. g- g- grabbing stuff out of, you know, boxes and throwing mm-hmm. the boxes aside. And I think nothing of him. I have no mm-hmm. feelings. Like I said, if I have feelings, they're vaguely negative, vaguely nonviolent. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to harm him. Right. But I definitely don't think about love or anything. You right. Know? And, and so that vision of deadness is what I'm seeing and what I have made real. And it is that is what is not there. And the proof is this. 
these guys are moving around. Right. They have thoughts. Mm -hmm. They have fantasies. They have lives. They have histories. That's proof that they exist. They're not dead. But in fact, I move mostly in a world of dead people. Unless they have special... Because we're sleepwalking. Unless they have special interests for me, then I wake them up. Like, mm -hmm. you're not a dead person. Mm -hmm. My family isn't dead. You know, I don't think. But really what it is is that most people are the NPCs. I forget what it stands for in the game world. Uh, Non-participating non characters. characters. Yeah. Non most people are NPCs. Mm -hmm. And they don't count. You know, I mean, they just kind of crawl out of doorways and disappear behind doorways. So I essentially, and, and I'm in dead buildings, mm -hmm. and I see dead people. You know, it's, it's, there's no life in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not a psychopath. I'm just saying, you know, doth he protest too much. Right. But, so, and you're saying, but it's not there. I'm saying yeah. I'm seeing deadness. Right. It's not there. It's not there, right. What's there is life. Right. Life. Mm -hmm. But I don't see it. Right, until you want to, until you want the Holy Spirit's answer in everything. So it's not like suddenly, and that's, it starts to answer my, I, my understanding of what the real world really is. Mm -hmm. The real world is pumping with vitality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With the, the Holy Spirit, God Almighty, exuding graces through people's lives, out through these f physical forms that glow, Mm -hmm. And the Course says that when you start to develop the vision. I right. have not had this. They, you know, these forms, there's a halo around stuff and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I know that gets kind of like in a magical thinking. I'm just saying, though, that I've got proof that the guy stacking the tuna is, is alive and that for the most part, because I don't make the invitation of the Holy Spirit and I don't try to see with those eyes, I see a dead guy. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it was the common complaint with Jesus, even in the Bible, where um, he compares uh, being asleep and dead quite frequently, causing the disciples to be very confused about, let's say, Lazarus. Lazarus is asleep. Oh, well, let's go wake him up. You know, it's, then every, he's he's fine because first he thinks they think he's just sick, and now but he's asleep. And then Jesus has to say, oh, okay, he's dead. Because Jesus is, is, there is no death. Jesus is one with the Father. So the, he's experiencing that he knows, even though he's, he's an avatar in a, maybe some kind of simulation, I do not really know what this world is that we're, we're occupying and everything else. And he's come to give the good news. And his association with being sleepwalking and dead is the same in my mind. He he interchanges it several times. If I see a dead person, mm -hmm. if I follow the metaphysics of the course, what does it mean? It means I'm dead. Yeah. I can't see a dead person unless I'm dead. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, unless unless yeah, unless you perceive yourself as not. I'm an NPC, in other words. As I'm a non-participating character. Yeah, if I'm not an no eternal being that's going to go on and on forever and is already in love with, you know, as, as one. Where I mean, then you're in the Christed state where Jesus was, you know, constantly walking as a recognition that I cannot die. But Well, and that's because you're in an eternal present. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever that could possibly be. Um, was there anything else? It just says that we should not be content with nothing. What is not real can be seen. What is not real cannot be seen and has no value. Again, the, the language is um, what is value, what is valuable, and what is valueless. Many times used in, in here. And God could not offer his son what has no value, nor could his son receive something that has no value. So um, anytime I think that I've received something that's not of value, you know, I'm just participating in the world of my perception. The world of value is all around me. It's all through me. It's in everything. Well, so the implication for me is that there's a toggle switch on reality. There's a toggle switch. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and one of it is it's a bunch of dead material. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, you know. Uh, walls are solid and people are lunkheads and... Et cetera, et cetera. It's just dead. Right. It's a dead place. Um, I, I move the toggle switch. I see 
um, the whole thing is fired or fueled on a mainframe called God, mm-hmm. the, the mind of God, and it's and it fires up. You realize that the only reason you can see any of this stuff, the only reason it's there, the only reason I have something even called physical sight, much less spiritual sight, is because of this mainframe, this this the mind of God that fires everything with this intense intelligence and vitality. Yes, and that's the toggle, you know, so that I'm either seeing the the vitality and the 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 pumping reality that life is life force love force life force love force yes or you're not right. yeah i know it's true okay paragraph 7 yet it does not matter how much distance you have tried to interpose between your awareness and the truth god's son can be seen because his vision is shared The Holy Spirit looks upon him and sees nothing else in you. What is invisible to you is perfect in his sight and encompasses all of it. He has remembered you because he forgot not the Father. You looked upon the unreal and found despair. Yet by seeking the unreal, what else could you find? The unreal world is a thing of despair, for it can never be. And you who share God's being with him could never be content without reality. What God did not give you has no power over you. And the attraction of love for love remains irresistible. For it is the function of love to unite all things unto itself and to hold all things together by extending its wholeness. And again, this idea about love seeking out love what god did not give you has no power over you and the attraction of love for love remains irresistible okay where's where's this love the attraction what god did not why why are we putting these phrases together what god did not give you has no power over you and which isn't love and it's not, yeah it's what's unreal okay. it's not love yeah. Right. So, so God, you know, if, so God did not give me anything but love, and so whatever God gave me um, is the only thing that has any power because it's love is attracted to love. Love will always seek out itself, which I've said before is I think that love, another form of it, is some sort of gravitational force of unity. That if you instead of saying you know in the sentimental ideas about love, like mm-hmm. I talked about, his name is uh, Bernardo. Castrop, I think uh, he's the one that was interviewing with um, Chris Langdon, the mm-hmm. the new physics, not new physics guy, but he's got his model, the theory of everything. Yeah, the theory of everything guy. Um, this Bernardo Castrop is saying he doesn't see any love in the world, and when he and he tries to express why that is, it seems clear to me that he has. A sentimental idea about what love is, which is why he doesn't see it anywhere in the world, because he's a very, very smart guy, mm-hmm. and he does not see a Hallmark card world. Mm-hmm. That's obvious. Okay, so once we determine that this isn't a Hallmark card world, then what is love? And that's why I'm saying that I think that love is the the magnetic pull of things toward each other. You know, witnessed as you know, a rock falling down a mountain. It doesn't fall up the mountain and it's a space. It, it rolls down the mountain and finds rest at the lowest point. Mm-hmm. That's just physics. But I would say that it's an aspect of the way love works. It tends to settle in. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a resting. The father being the ocean, we are all rivers or ice or snow or Mm -hmm. glaciers and we melt and we go down the mountain and we end up in the ocean. You know, that's that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That image that they use in Hinduism Uh a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, love, I don't think that once you experience the love of God, even if you have moments of it or whatever, there's no real words except that it makes you smile. It makes you feel like life is worth living. There's this up. It, it, I would say that if depression causes a constriction, love causes the expansion. You know, it, it goes out. It, it immediately wants to be shared. It just 
it extends without effort. And because it extends without effort, it also returns without effort. Once it finds itself, it just uh, goes out and just woo, 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 and it just comes back like, you know, it's just like boomerangs like, to go out into the world and then come back and bring, bring more of itself. It right. brings more of itself. Well, you've got a couple of friends, and you've talked about them here, um, that are by any definition are loving people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, they experience a lot of pain and difficulty mm -hmm. because they feel that this love is never, ever returned to them, you know, and that and you would be able to say, but what you're doing is, you know, you'd, you'd have some psychological or emotional explanation. I'd say that, you know, it's important to understand the non hallmark and be able to put it into words. Right, uh, the I agree. Vision of love, because if I'm just smiling to myself and saying, "I feel the love of God," you know, it's like <laughs> no better way to freeze yourself out at a party. No, I know. Than to come in there beaming with the love of God, and everybody else is just trying to, you know. No, if you don't say those words, but you're beaming with the love of God, guess what? People are gonna like, look, whatever you have, I want some of that. Okay, let me remind you, you claim to have been can you claim to have been forced out by someone at one of your places of employment because I said nobody could be that happy. Oh yeah, nobody can be that nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was happy, but I, nobody can be that nice. Yeah, well, I know some people can't handle the light. <laughs> what can I say? Hey man, I'm a light bulb, so I <laughs> wear some sunglasses. <laughs> No, I got to be me. No, no, no. I don't, I don't really know what that particular thing is. That it, it truly disturbs some people when um, they don't experience that for themselves and they think that you're faking it, you know? And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I didn't think I was. And then I have to check in. Was I being fake? I, maybe I was. I don't know. Well, my point is <laughs> not to get into a... <laughs> critique or analysis of personality <laughs> styles at parties it's it's to How say at work <laughs> it's to say or at work uh it, the the point is that i think it for me it's helpful to try to understand how people can have lives that seem devoid of love and yet they crave love this happens a lot no it happens a lot and and i think that some of it is because they don't have a good working definition of love i would agree and i don't know if i can define it according to the course because it's asking you to experience it by letting go of your preconceived ideas of anything okay let's call this a definition for it is the function of love to unite all things unto itself and to hold all things together by extending its wholeness. Sounds like a pretty close to being a definition. Right. But in the ways of the world, it seems uh, ambiguous. That's because... Let's, let's dial it in. Okay, dial it in. Right now, let's okay, dial it you in. You begin. Okay. The function of love is to unite all things unto itself. So that when I, you know, when there's a tendency... Whether it's a, a guy that has a crush on a girl, mm -hmm. or if it's a, a car rolling down a hill, or um, you know a rock or water rushing down a mountainside, there's an aspect of unification that this world wants to fall into unity in all ways. That's physically and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really want to explode outward. Even ironically, you can talk about the. Um, the expansion of the universe at the edge of the universe. It's expanding out. There is a theory that this, the, the known universe has a shape mm -hmm. because at the edge, it speeds up. And this is called the red shift. In other words, things are speeding up as they move away from where we're looking. Mm -hmm. So that means that at the edge, edges of the universe, there's a theory that things hit the speed of light at the very edge of the universe. Why? Because they turn to pure energy. Where do they go? I don't so that, no, what I'm saying is they're falling. It looks like an explosion from our point of view. Mm -hmm. It looks like a universe expanding. But it's actually falling towards the speed of light into the unknown. That unknown is God. Mm. So we're contained within God in this known universe. So that everything that you see and everything that everybody tries to do, all the wars, all the deaths, all the grasping, all this kind of stuff, 
is some, be it perverse or misconstrued or misunderstood version of trying to pull things together, trying to express this love, that it is the driving force of everything. And if seen correctly, it leads to happiness. If seen incorrectly, it leads to a lot of pain. Right. These people I was talking about, no, they, I, they're I trying say... to grasp, they're trying to grab people and pull them to themselves, yeah. kind of like the World Economic Forum. You know, it's trying to grab me and <laughs> suck me in. Well, right. Yeah. It, well, you know, possession of, of other beings, you know, feeling as though somebody owes you because of your relationship to them, because they're their mother and it's a daughter or whatever it is, or a son. I mean, so there is... Um, Worldly expectations based on Hallmark, by the way, Hallmark has not actually helped relationships. No, exactly. And the Course is saying that because I march into the world with my big idea of what love looks like. Yeah, I know. All, it means, te all teddy bears and hearts. It means a Valentine's Day card with chocolates and roses. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> okay, no, that's right. not okay. it. That is not it. Okay, last paragraph. Okay. Thank you for going there with me. Okay. The real world was given you by God in loving exchange for the world you made and the world you see. Only take it from the hand of Christ and look upon it. Its reality will make everything else invisible, for beholding it is total perception. And as you look upon it, you will remember that it was always so. Nothingness will become invisible, for you will at last have seen truly Redeemed perception is easily translated into knowledge, for only perception is capable of error, and perception has never been. Being corrected, it gives place to knowledge, which is forever the only reality. The atonement is but the way back to what was never lost. Your father could not cease to love his son. For some reason, while I was reading that, I get to realize, you know, you got this, you spend your life trying to get your, what, what do they call it, a CV, curricula vitae? Yes. You know, uh -huh. With all of its little bullet points. On of your all, resume. Yeah, yes. all the fabulous things I've done, mm -hmm. all the fabulous works I've accomplished, the studies, the importance mm -hmm. I've gained, and I pass this thing around to show people how incredibly well-heeled I am and I mean H E E L E D, not E H E A L. It's heal, and um, mm -hmm. and I and I do this, and you've got to be willing to take that thing and burn it up and never look back. That's right, it is. Because that's, the guy stacking cans, the guy stacking the cans, he's better than you, because mm -hmm. he's got the face of Christ, and all you can do is receive. Right. That's it. Yeah. He's be, He's. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, it, and I'm he's sorry. Not, he's not better than you. Oh. As a perceiver, sorry. Well, as it maybe, but I mean, if I'm given the gift the of same. perceiving, if you're starting to see the face in Christ in Him, you end up being the same. I ain't a communist. <laughs> you know, communist. <laughs> I know. No, you know what I mean. No, I mean, you. Once you recognize the Christ in another, you cannot not recognize it in yourself. I, I know. But I'm, I'll give you my experience though. Is when I have. When this softening does happen, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm telling you, you invite it, man, you get it, right. okay? I could pretend it doesn't. I could pretend that it just doesn't go anywhere. No, it does. It does. It does. And when you see that face of Christ or something like it in another person, I don't want to own it, right? But mm -hmm. the thing is, it is a slippery slope down to the Zyder Z of God's, you know, formless body. You know, it's in other words, when you see that, there's nothing to hold on to. Your little CV, your little resume, your little accomplishments, your little sense of being safe and separately above anybody or anything. Really, it's exposed as being empty. Well, I, I and that's agree. And an that's an uncomfortable place as a transition. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right. It just depends. I mean, at different uh, personalities and stuff are different when when those things happen. Some of it. I mean, some people just go, oh, wow, <laughs> look at that. I'm seeing the world very, very differently. And they don't have a sense of trying to hold on to their ego. I mean, uh, and other people, I mean, it's frightening because the, 
the whole thing. Yeah, well, I've got an ego. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, well, so do I. And it just shows up in different ways and different people. <laughs> I bet mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can, can <laughs> measure it or not. Put it out there. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Thanks. That was great.